Hey guys, Sam here with Med School Made Easy. This video is made in response to Russell Garcia and all his med school homies. Uh, they had a question about the complement cascade pathway. We're going to run through that really quick. Uh, first of all, I know there's a lot up here on the board. Stick with me though. It'll be really simple, really fast, really easy. Uh, I know it's a little overwhelming, but we'll get to it. Um, the biggest thing about the complement cascade is that you have to visualize that there are three separate starters that take you to the same end pathway that end with the same result. So that's why I have this huge picture, all this stuff up here is you got to visualize each one of these pathways can get you to the end. They all start a little bit different, but they all end the same way. Um, lastly, when you're setting this up, I like to draw this out if I'm ever having a test on it, that sort of thing. I draw it up. Um, your acronym for this guy is going to be CAL, CAB, CAB. And that's C-A-L for classical alternative lectin and then cab cab, uh, we'll get to that, but it's convertase is their C, A, B, convertase is your C, A, B. So cal, cab, cab. And again, you have three starters that are each unique, and they'll take you to the same end pathway, same end result. Uh, one last thing, I'm only going to be going over the specifics that you need to know for boards. So if you're more interested in uh, more complex, the more the complexities of these pathways, which trust me, each one of these starters, they're very complex. Uh, you have to look it up in a medical encyclopedia, that sort of thing, immunology maybe, textbook. Uh, right now we're just going to go over what you need to know to be a successful physician and to get you through boards. We'll start up here with the classical activating pathway. I might move the camera here a little bit to better see this. And the gist of this classical pathway is A, B, C. Now all that occurs is an antibody attaches to an antigen, just like what happens constantly in immunology, you've heard of that before. Antibody plus antigen, that then attracts and adds to the C1 complex, which through some magical serine proteases, some enzymes, gets us to C3 convertase. So this mnemonic ABC for classical is AB for your antibody, C for your C1 complex, ABC. Now the big thing to note, what they're gonna ask you on test is which of these starter pathways uses antibodies in it. And that's going to be classical. So classical uses ABC, antibody antigen, adds to the C1 complex through some serine proteases, gets you to C3 convertase, gets you to this common pathway, the second half. We'll now move over to the alternative activating pathway, this middle one here. And the gist of this guy, and the way that I remember it, is that you're dealing with a young or an immature or an alternative C3. So you're dealing with, you've heard of alternative high schools, Heard of alternative youth, alternative music, all those things are kind of wild, kind of young, uh, kind of different. And so you're essentially dealing with your C3 that you're going to be dealing with in your C3 convertase. However, it's a little immature. And what makes it really wise up is when it deals with the pathogen. So that pathogen is going to mix with your young, your immature C3. Uh, the thioester bond in that C3 is going to be hydrolyzed. Uh, again, that's very specific. We don't need to go any more than pathogen matures your young C3, turns into the C3 convertase, which is an enzyme gets you the common pathway. Um, what's going to be big on this one that they're going to ask you questions about in your test is which of these three starter pathways is part of innate immunity, and that is indeed the alternative. Uh, I guess I don't know how you want to remember that, the young, the alternative, the innate. You have this innate youth, you have this young inner child, this wild child inside you. That's your alternative pathway. Lastly, these starter pathways, the L of your cal is going to be the lectin pathway. Now, this one's very easy to memorize because lectin, the name, the L, the lectin, already gets you to its mechanism. Now, MBL stands for mannose binding lectin. Now, mannose is a carbohydrate just like glucose, fructose, etc., monosaccharide. Um, all that happens is this complex known as MBL, mannose binding lectin, just like the lectin pathway, same name, mannose binding lectin, binds to a, a mannose. Mannose binding lectin binds to a mannose, a carbohydrate. It can also bind to glucose, uh, some other varieties of simple carbohydrates, but usually, as the name says, it's going to be mannose, sometimes it'll be glucose. Once that complex gets together, it gets activated, sends you down here, turns into and activates C3 convertase. And now we're going to finish this up, go through this common pathway. So again, all three of these unique ones get you here to this common pathway. We had to write out cab, cab earlier. That's because C for convertase, A, B, and you notice that same pattern repeats itself. C, A, B. The only difference is you're dealing with C3 first, you're dealing with C5 second. Uh, I will walk you through this even though I think you guys can pick it up. C3 convertase, which is where all of our 
starter pathways end up, it converts, it attacks, it changes C3, which is a protein, changes into C3A and C3B. Uh, then C3B comes down here, does the same thing, C5 convertase, changes C5. We're now dealing with uh, C5B is one product, and our other two products are C3A and C5A. Now these two, C3A and C5A, so your two A's, they play a huge role in anaphylaxis. They work with mast cells, they deal with your allergic reactions. However, the main purpose of this complement cascade is opsonization. You've probably heard of that. Basically, you want to get rid of that pathogen. Whatever this antigen is, that pathogen is, whatever that carbohydrate that's on a, path, on a pathogen surface, I might have mem uh, mentioned that earlier, but these carbohydrates, these glucose, this mannose, that's going to be the outside of a pathogen. To get rid of these, that's why we're going through this whole thing. So we're really looking right now at the C5B, which activates the membrane attack complex, MAC. You'll hear it referred to as MAC, MAC. Basically, this coats the pathogen, it coats the antigen, it coats everything around it, and it introduces transmembrane channels. Transmembrane channels leads to lysis, and this, this whole process is known as opsonization, it's an opsonin, and what that means is your macrophages are going to see that, that coating, and they're going to get rid of it. This will destroy it with lysis by inserting those transmembrane proteins, and then all that junk, all that rubble that's afterwards, that's where your macrophages come in and clean up. So again, Three individual pathways lead to one common pathway. Uh, so mnemonics here to help me, cal, cab, cab. These two are the same, just with different numbers, three and then five. Uh, your classical pathway uses antibodies. That's going to be asked about. It goes A, B, C, antibody, C1. Your alternative pathway, it's young, it's immature, it's alternative. That's the alternative pathway you're dealing with an immature C3. Uh, Alternative, I don't know, better mnemonic than that. And lastly, lectin up here. Manos binding lectin, it's in the name. Manos is also in the name. What it does, it binds to manos. And that's the complement cascade. Two more things that I didn't mention. First of all, this membrane attack complex is made up of proteins C5 through C9. Uh, if you have a problem with this membrane attack complex, a clinical correlation is that you'll get recurrent Neisseria infections. That might be a board Sports question, excuse me. And another thing is that the C3 convertase, um, it can be inhibited by DAF, DAF, and that works through this GPI anchor. Anyways, long story short, if you don't have that GPI anchor through a mutation, you it's called paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, which is the, you can look that disease up, that's not a clinical correlation, but it's where you have red urine uh, and red blood cell lysis.